Hey everybody, it's Noah here with Learn Meta Analysis, and I am super excited to bring you guys another tool today. This is something that, honestly, I made it really fast. <laughs> I made it strikingly fast. Um, it was one of those things where I think this is going to be really helpful for anyone who does systematic review or meta analysis. So let's take a look at the scenario first, and then I'll show you the solution, okay? So here's the scenario. You're doing a meta analysis or systematic review. You have narrowed down all your files to something crazy like this, right? Where let's say you have, I don't know, 100 full text studies that you need to have. This is this tool is specifically designed to help us between screening phases one, or looking at just abstracts, and two, where we need to get the full text. This is gonna help us get those full text faster, right? Right? So typically what I would do is if I had my spreadsheet like this, this is just in a uh, CSV export from like Zotero or any of those other programs. Typically, there's a couple options. Number one, if it has a DOI, you can see it shows me what the DOI is here. So if I wanted to find this DOI, I'd have to do something like this. And maybe you guys have a better solution to this than I do. Um, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I guess one solution would be to open up Zotero and copy paste that DOI in. And if it can get the full text, it will probably grab that full text. That is one solution, but I didn't think about that till literally just now. So another option has typically been to like go to Google and search for that DOI. So I'd put like DOI, something like that, and try and find it. And that takes forever. Let's be honest, that takes forever. And that's if it gives you the DOI, but it doesn't always give you the DOI. Sometimes all you actually have is the title of the article, right? So then we'd like, take the title and I'm just not gonna save that data set. We'll take the title, copy paste it in, hit enter. Then we need to go download that PDF and then we'll do that over and over and over again until we end up with like all of our studies, right? Until we have all the full text that we can get. So that's tedious. That process is literally zero fun. I don't like that process at all. It takes forever. I mean, you can burn an entire day, maybe even multiple days, depending upon the number of studies, trying to locate these things because you have to go copy paste, put the title in, go to Google Scholar, see if there's a PDF. If there's not a PDF, maybe you went directly to the website of the publisher to try and get the PDF from there. It's just a terrible process that takes forever. I'm happy to tell you that I now have a solution for you and it's free. Okay, so here's what I've done. I have, with the help of a large language model, built this full text finder. So there are some instructions written on here about things you should and shouldn't do. But I want to show you quickly what this is going to do, okay? Uh, because I think once you see it, you're gonna be like, oh my gosh, that's so much better, <laughs> right? It's just so much better. So here's what we do. First thing I'm gonna do, and this is an optional step, but uh, I'm gonna put in my email address. The reason I'm gonna do this is because it's going to let us use the unpaywall API, which helps us find open access, legal to access PDFs. So I'm just gonna put, of course I deleted it, um, learnmetaanalysis.com. So I'm just gonna put my email address there. Then I'm gonna select my file, it popped up on my other screen. This is just that same CSV file. And you can see it reads it in automatically. I have my titles, I have my authors, I have my year, I have a suggested file name. But look over here on the right side, guys. This is, this is what changes the game for us here. This is the time saver. Number one, it found this PDF on Unpaywall. So if I wanna go directly to that PDF, all I do is upload my file and now I click here, boom, I got my PDF file. That's so much faster. Now, what happens if, let's say that isn't there, like down here, this one's grayed out because I didn't have the DOI, so it couldn't use on paywall. Well, what can we do? If there is a DOI, then we can go directly to the DOI link like this on the publisher's page, and you can sometimes download it from there. So we have that directly built in. But here's the other thing. Let's say those don't work and we need to just search Google Scholar. What we can do is use this green button here, which is going to search for Google Scholar. It's gonna search Google Scholar using the title of the article. And if, their PD if the PDF was available, there'd be a link for it over here on the right side. So the other thing that this will save time with is you can connect your Google Scholar to your university's library system. And I'll go through and I'll show you how to do that at the end of this video, because that is a way that you can save a bunch of time um, with this process. So like with this one, I know that I typically do not have easy access to Taylor and Francis articles. It's just something that I know about the access to different papers that I have. So I don't see a PDF here. So if I was going to do this, this would tell me that yes, from here, I do need to go and find that paper in a different way. So we can see right here, all we have to do, open PDF. Now I can download it, I can save it, and I'm good to go. Then I move on to the next one. I, this one doesn't have it, but you know what? It's got the DOI link and I can probably access the full text from here. 
Yep, view PDF, and then I can download it. So this is a very, very simple to use software that I think is, it's not even software. I, I built this as a website. It doesn't it doesn't store any data or anything like that. And the only place your email address is used is when you send that API request. Um, so I think this is something that's gonna save you guys a lot of time. I fully intend on using it myself. Probably notice I put this suggested file name in here. This just has to do with how I save files. And so I thought it would be easy. So what my workflow is going to be when I use this is I'm just gonna hit copy to copy that file name. I'm gonna go here to download this. I'm gonna hit download. It's gonna put it in this folder. And then I am going to open up my folder, which it did on the other screen, and just rename it and copy paste that name in there. And then I have it in my downloads folder and I can move it to whatever folder I need to really quickly and easily. So. I hope this is something that you guys are gonna find helpful. This is one of those things that I didn't actually realize I needed until yesterday. <laughs> so yesterday, my friend and I were trying to update a meta-analysis and we were going through and we have we were like, oh, we gotta find 100 PDFs, 100 full text PDFs. And it's like, man, that's just such a drag. Like that is not what I wanna be doing with my time ever, but especially right now, like I'm super busy right now. I really didn't wanna be doing that, but we had to do it because there was no solution like this that lets us easily do it. So now that this is built, I mean, I did already go, we already did go find all those studies, but now that this is built, this will let us get these PDFs so much faster because we don't have to go to that CSV, copy a title, open up Google Scholar, paste it in, look for a PDF. We don't have to do that whole game anymore. Now I can just upload my CSV file directly as it came out of the uh, citation management system. I can just use that same file, drop it in. It's gonna automatically populate for me. If it's available via Unpaywall, it's gonna have it. If I have a DOI, it's gonna link me to it. And quote unquote, worst case, it's gonna throw me to Google Scholar where I can go find the PDF there, hopefully. So I hope this tool is really helpful for you guys. Please let me know your thoughts down in the comments section. Um, one of the things that I wanted to show you really quickly was how to connect Google Scholar to your library system. So let's see if I remember how to do that. I haven't done this in ages, but I think what we do is we go into the Google Scholar menu, then we go to settings and then we can go to library links and see how it says show library links. You can just choose who you need to connect to here. So you can type in your university uh, name and if it's available on here, it's gonna pop up. You can select it and then once you log in and stuff using, you should be able to log in if I remember right, it still uses like your university login to actually access it. Like I haven't done it on this computer as you can see, but from what I remember, I think what it'll do is send you to like a lot of universities have single sign on or something like that. And so I think it'll forward you to your single sign on and then you are able to get access to it. So this is a really helpful tool because as you'll see, not all of the articles are actually available like by default in Google Scholar. Um, it's typically the ones that are open access. So like this one here is not available, but if I had this connected to my university's library system, it probably would be available. And I'd just be able to click a button. It usually says like, find it at whatever your university is. And then it'll connect you to your university databases so you can go find it. So that said, I'm gonna stop talking here. I don't really see a reason to make this video any longer than it needs to be. This is just a short, sweet tool that I think is gonna be really helpful for you guys. Please, like I said, let me know what you think. I I honestly plan to distribute this to my friends because so much of our time gets absolutely wasted trying to do this, right? Um, so I, I, I think this is going to really speed up our workflows. So please leave your thoughts down in the comments. I hope this is helpful. If there's any additions or anything like that you wanna to see to this, like I said, I made this pretty quick I mean, I think if I didn't time it, but I guess I don't have any more than an hour into building this thing. So if there's any features that you guys wanna see added, just let me know. Let me know what you wanna see added. I will try and build it in if it's something that's relatively straightforward and easy to do. Uh, but that said, I'm gonna end the video here. Thanks guys. I hope this helps you with your meta-analysis adventures and I will see you in the next video.